So, uh, hello everyone. Uh, today uh, I'd like to uh, talk about how to manage and optimize system with multiple memory tiles. Uh, yeah. Uh, the community has worked on uh, the system with multiple memory types for years. Uh, here is uh, some updates in the last year. Uh, the basic support for the neural balancing based promotion has been merged by upstream. Uh, the hot page selection of, of promotion is in MM and stable. Uh, Anish uh, from IBM uh, contributed the explicit memory materials and it is in MM and stable now. Uh, Anish from IBM and we from Google uh, is working on memory tiers user space interface. Uh, part of it has been merged by uh, MM and stable. Uh, Johannes from Meta uh, sent a parasite to interleave the memory location among memory tiers. Uh, my colleague Fong is working on a respect new policy or CPU set in devotion. Uh, my colleague Tim uh, is working on partitioning our type of memory among <clears throat> C groups. Uh, today I will uh, discuss some of them in this presentation and want to get your feedback for them. Yeah, initially all memory are just a simple DRAM. Uh, then uh, we get remote DRAM. Uh, that is, the memory system becomes non uniform. So we use a set of new mechanisms and the API to manage and optimize the system. For example, we use a uh, new policy and the CPU set to manage page placement during allocation and use neural balancing to reduce the remote DRAM accessing. Uh, then uh, we get PMAP. Uh, we put them in separate DRAM nodes uh, so that we can take advantage of the existing neural mechanism and API. Uh, in addition to use the existing new mechanism API, we also extended them for the new requirement of PMAM. Uh, for example, uh, in the default, new, uh, default memory allocation for back order, the local PMAM may be preferred over the remote DRAM to reduce the cross socket traffic. But the performance of remote DRAM uh, may be better than that to local PMAM, and some workload may need that. So a new mechanism, a new uh, new policy, and policy preferred many uh, is added, uh, where multiple nodes can be specified as preferred. With that, uh, we can prefer the remote DRAM over the local PMAM for some workload. Uh, to optimize the page placement, we will demote the code DRAM pages to PMAM and promote the hot PMAM pages to DRAM. Uh, the demotion support is based on the per node page reclaiming. Uh, whereas when there are when there is mem pressure in the DRAM node, uh, instead of discarding the identified code pages directly, uh, we will try to migrate them to PMAM. Uh, the promotion is based on the neural balancing. Uh, neural balancing uh, can reduce the uh, uh, cross socket uh, memory accessing where identifying uh, remote access to pages and uh, try to migrate them to the local node. Well, uh, for the 
because all the PMAP accesses will be considered remote. Uh, so neural balancing can be made to uh, migrate to the recently accessed PMAP pages to the uh, DRAM. Uh, we also implemented a mechanism to select the hot pages before promote. Uh, now, even more memory types uh, types of memory are coming. Uh, for example, the HBM, uh, high bandwidth memory, and the CXR memory devices, and so forth. How to manage them? Firstly, we will put them in into the separate NUMA nodes, so we can use various NUMA mechanism and the API for them. Uh, in addition to uh, putting them in separate NUMA nodes, to manage more and more types of memory, we want to introduce a new concept, memory types. In general, a uh, memory type is a set of memory devices. These memory devices are online by the same driver, linked to the system in the same way, and uh, built with the same media and so forth. So they will have the same performance. For example, the memory type of all HBM node of a system can be HBM. Uh, if some stacks are uh, devices are plugged in the local CXR slots, where a shared CXR memory pool is linked to the system uh, where some CXR switch, their memory type will be different because they are linked to the system in quite different way. Because of that, uh, their performance will be quite different too. Uh, memory types are not just concept. We will use a data structure to represent the memory type in kernel explicitly. Uh, to characterize the performance of a memory type with one performance metric, we introduce the attack distance. And this is inspired by NUMA distance. As you know, the NUMA distance describes the distance or access performance from the CPUs of a NUMA node to the memory of the same or another NUMA node. Well, the abstract distance describes the distance or access performance from the CPUs of a, in a socket to a type of memory in the same socket. That is, the NUMA topology isn't considered to and determine the value of the track distance. Like the NUMA distance, uh, smaller value means better performance. Uh, as you know, the lengthy and the bandwidth are the most important performance metrics of a memory device. So we want to reflect both of them in abstract distance. The question is how to combine them. Uh, we have no perfect solution yet. Uh, one possibility is to define the abstract distance as the length under the expected access throughput. Uh, as shown in the figure, uh, if the access throughput of a memory device is very low, the actual, uh, its, it's actual length will near the idle length. When the access throughput increases, the actual length will increase this too. Uh, if the access throughput near the max bandwidth, uh, the actual length increase rapidly. So, uh, if the access throughput of a memory type will near its max bandwidth, uh, its abstract distance should be enlarged to reflect the actual access length increment. This also means that the abstract distance will be workload dependent. Uh, this is just uh, one possibility. Uh, do you have any good idea of how to determine uh, determine the value of abstract distance? Uh, please.
please let, let us know. We also want, uh, plan to expose the memory types to the user space where the CSFS interface. Uh, with that, users can find out how many types of a memory in their system, uh, the memory type of each node, and the performance of each type of memory. One, mem uh, one memory type device will be created for each memory type. The memory type devices may be put in this device's virtual memory type directory. Uh, although it appears more natural to put the, these devices in this device's system directory, like node, CPU, memory, and so forth. But the system subsystem is considered legacy now. Uh, the kernel of South uh, comments says that the new devices shouldn't be ended there. Although uh, this device's virtual is a choice too, uh, memory types are not just a pure virtual software concept. They are related to hardware. Uh, do you have any better choice? This is a question too. Uh, for each type of, uh, for each memory type device, we can show the name of the memory type. Uh, for example, HVM, DRAM, PMAM, uh, CXRMAM, and so forth. Uh, we need a way to show the nodes of all all new nodes of the memory type. Uh, for example, where the symbol links to the uh, Numa nodes of uh, Numa node system devices, uh, we will show the uh, default abstract distance provided by the driver, and uh, uh, we we will provide a knob for users to override the default abstract distance. For example, where the abstract distance offsite right for attribute. This can be used to uh, for to deal with some uh, problematic firmware, and as we discussed before, the abstract distance may be workload dependent. Users may need to adjust the abstract distance of a memory type to reflect the actual latency under the expected throughput. Uh, yeah, we may also show some raw performance metrics such as idle latency, uh, max bandwidth. These can be gotten uh, from ACPI HMIT or CXR CDAT and so forth. Memory types are used to describe the various physical properties of the memory devices. For example, uh, suppose in a system, even if the latency and the bandwidth of PMAM and the CXRMAM devices are similar, they will still be regarded as two different memory types. Because they are different in the way to link to the system, and they are different uh, uh, in media, yeah, uh, so, and so forth. Uh, but from performance point of view, users may want to deal with them in the same way. Memory tiers are used for that. Uh, as in the example figure, PMAM and uh, CXRMAM are put in one memory tier, tier two. Uh, that is, memory tier is more about performance. Other physical properties are not considered. Each memory tier corresponds to a range of abstract distance. It includes all memory types whose abstract distance 
is uh, in the range. Primary tiers can also be used to apply some user policy. Uh, for example, although the performance of HBM and the VRAM is different, some users may want to group them into one memory tier. Uh, for example, because their workload may run better with the simplified memory tiers hierarchy. Uh, just example. This can be done by customizing the abstract distance range of the memory tier. Uh, we want to expose memory tiers via CCFS2. One memory tier device is created for each memory tier. The memory tier devices can be put in uh, sys devices virtual memory tier directory. For each memory tier uh, device, we will show the list of nodes of the memory tier, uh, the symbol links to the memory types in the memory tier, uh, and the start and end of the abstract distance range. Uh, we will also uh, provide a symbol link to the uh, memory tier of the normal DRAM. Uh, in the parent directory. And uh, memory tiers uh, can be used to apply some user policy to group memory types. So uh, we need some way, we need to provide some knob to customize the abstract distance ring for that. Uh, we can divide the abstract distance space into Equally, equally size the trunks. Each abstract distance trunk corresponds to one memory tier. Then we can customize the abstract distance trunk size to change the abstract distance range of memory tiers. Uh, yeah, so on the other side, uh, we, as we just talked, we have already provided a way to customize the abstract distance of a memory type. So with that, we can uh, move a memory type from one memory tier to another memory tier uh, so that we can use that to apply user policy to group memory types too. Yeah. Uh, For memory tier device ID, uh, we have several choices. One choice is to use 0, 1, 2, 3, and, and so on. And this is intuitive to understand, uh, but the IDs will be a little unstable. For example, if there, are, there is only one node in tier 1, when we offline that node, the old memory tier 2 will become memory tier 1 now. Uh, another choice is to use the uh, abstract distance start dividing abstract distance trunk size or abstract distance start directly. Uh, in this way, the IDs uh, it will only change if we customize, customize the abstract distance ranges. Uh, we can still get the uh, memory, we can still get the relationship among memory tiers where sorting the IDs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Here, uh, now we, we, I have finished the introduction to the multiple memory types management from management side. Uh, so what do you think about solution? Uh, any comments or questions? Uh, yes, uh, I think uh, uh, some it is still uh, under discussion or yeah, not not uh, finally uh, finalized.
Are you ready, ready for questions, Ying? Yeah, yeah. In, in this part, I think it is the is the alternative to for question. For this part. Hey, yeah. Uh, so uh, I, I have a comment regarding the term memory types. I, I'm not particularly happy about calling CXL memory a memory type. It could be it, like HBM attached via CXL. It could be PMEM attached via CXL. You might want to find a different way of describing what type of memory it is, if it's relevant, and how it's attached. Maybe there is a better way of abstracting that compared to just throwing everything into the CXL box. That's my personal opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 that's, uh, yeah, so uh, the, the, the figure is uh, misleading. In fact, uh, uh, yeah, uh, if uh, something different, uh, uh, the, the sex arm uh, box in, in the figure may be uh, several different memory types. Yeah, as you said, it, it could be uh, sector attached HBM or sector attached PMAM or local sector or remote sector. Uh, yeah, it, it can be uh, several uh, sector memory types. Yeah. I, I had a follow up on that. I, I think it's more of how close it is, like, uh, or where it's attached, right? Like, because you can have direct attached uh, DRAM or direct attached. Uh, PMEM on the, the 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 DIMMs, right? Then CXL, you could have persistent memory there. And in in the end, do you really care whether it's CXL or PMEM? It's more of whether it's volatile or not, and the latency adder from there, right? I, I feel like you could abstract that and yeah, could just get rid of the whether it's uh, CXL or not, right? It's really about the properties of the media and how that relates to the CPU. But that's just my thought. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I think we can take all the information uh, into account. Uh, uh, for example, as it, the sector may, may have some specific driver for it, so we can identify the sector devices from the direct attached devices. And yeah, in, in the sector driver, you you can further uh, further uh, define multiple types of memory. And yeah, something like that. Yeah, again, following up on the same thing, um, it feels like an ABI that we're going to introduce, we're going to discover it's not flexible enough, um, perhaps some of the things that have already been raised. Maybe it's a question of splitting it up into finer grained things, so have one thing that describes the media, um, maybe another thing that describes something about how it's attached, or take the easiest ABI and get rid of it completely. Don't have a name and just rely on the properties. Yeah, Ying, I think you're trying to describe there a way of grouping a bunch of NUMA nodes together. And we already have a bunch yeah. of the raw data there that describes what those nodes are and, and some, some of how they're connected. So I think I think what people are saying is that it, it sounds like the the argument to construct those into a bigger a bigger bubble, like to group a bunch of nodes together, that argument I think was a, um, could be strengthened from that presentation. We're not seeing the argument there to, to really, really create the, those types and enforce that as a policy that the kernel is kind of keeping around. Okay. 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 I guess you can go ahead, Ying. Thank you. Uh, okay. Okay. Thanks. Uh, uh, thanks a lot uh, for your comments. And yeah. Uh, let's let's. Uh, go on. Yeah. Uh, in the context of memory pairs, uh, the system default memory allocation fallback order is roughly from fast memory tier to uh, the slow memory tier. Uh, in this way, we can take full advantage of the valuable fast memory capacity, and uh, in some workloads, the hot pages may be allocated first. So will be put in faster memory. Uh, but this this only works well if the access throughput of fast memory is uh, much less its max bandwidth. That that is far from being saturated. Otherwise, 
as if we run some very uh, memory throughput heavy workloads, uh, such as some AI workloads, as we discussed previously, uh, the actual length of the fast memory will increase greatly, but the memory bandwidth of the slow memory may be underutilized. So, for this kind of workload, one solution is to interleave memory allocation among memory tiers to maximize the memory throughput. Uh, like the interleave NUMA policy, uh, the slow memory pages will be allocated even if there are still enough free space in the in the fast memory. But instead of uh, interleaving among memory tiers evenly, uh, the proportion of memory allocation will be uh, determined by the memory tier uh, pro memory tier interleave weight. The interleave weight for each memory tier uh, can be decided according to the expected access throughput of the memory tiers. Uh, the interleave weight can be specified where the memory tier CFS interface. Uh, for page placement optimization, uh, the demotion implementation was rebased on the explicit memory tiers. The code pages uh, are demoted tier by tier. The demotion target is determined from the memory tier information. The new balancing based promotion wasn't changed much, much yet. Uh, the hot pages are still promoted from the lower tier nodes to the nodes with CPU directly. That can be revised to promote hot pages tier by tier. Uh, we may do that after the requirements are more clear. Memory tiers are uh, orthogonal with sockets. The memory devices uh, from multiple sockets may be put in one memory tier. During the motion, although we will prefer the local socket by default, sometimes we will we may still demote to the remote socket. If we want to avoid cross-socket memory accessing as much as possible, we need to use some explicit NUMA policy or CPU set. And we need to respect uh, them during the motion. This is needed to uh, enforce some page placement control policy too. Uh, for example, if we run, want to run some workload in DRAM only, uh, we can explicitly ban the memory of the workload in some DRAM node. And we should not demote the pages of the workload from the DRAM nodes to the lower tier. Uh, for CPU site, if uh, C group V2 is used uh, during demotion, the placement control policy uh, can be gotten where the unified C group hierarchy. For each page to be promoted, uh, demoted, you can get a memory C group, uh, then get the CPU set configuration from uh, through the Unified C group hierarchy. Uh, but uh, if C group V1 is used because there is no such thing like unified hierarchy, we don't know how to get the, the CPU set configuration. Uh, if anyone knows how to do that, please tell us. Uh, for VMA NUMA policy uh, that is set with uh, MBAN, we can get the Page placement policy where reverse mapping uh, that is R map. For but for task level NUMA policy uh, that is set where set NUMA policy, uh, we don't know how to get the placement control policy. Uh, yeah, uh, during the demotion. 
uh, uh, not uh, no, sorry, sorry. Uh, not all information is available during the demotion. We can only do our best uh, from the page. Uh, we can get the mapping VMA uh, through the reverse mapping, then the MM struct, uh, then the owner task, uh, then the new policy of the uh, of the of the owner task. Uh, this doesn't work perfectly for multiple threaded processes with thread specific neural policy, but at least it uh, uh, it can deal with some common cases. For example, run a workload with neural control. Uh, we have done some performance evaluation for the memory tier tearing page placement optimization solution. The test uh, was, uh, was done on a two socket server with VRAM and often um, PCPMM. Uh, if PMM is used, the DRAM to PMM ratio is one to four. Three configurations are tested, base, optimized, and DRAM. In base configuration, DRAM and PMM is used and demotion and promotion is disabled. In optimized configuration, demotion and promotion is enabled. Uh, in DRAM configuration, uh, we use DRAM only, uh, but uh, the, the total memory size is the same as that of base and uh, optimized configuration. This can be used to get the best possible test results uh, as a reference. So here is the test results. Uh, in the figure, all test results are normalized to make the score of the base configuration to be 100. From the test results, we can find uh, for the micro benchmarks, such as uh, PM Bench, FIO. The benchmark score of optimized configuration increases considerably compared with that of uh, base configuration. This shows the effective effectiveness of the page placement optimization solution. Uh, for radius in-memory database workload, uh, the, the benchmark score of optimized configuration increases about 12.2% uh, compared with uh, that of uh, base, uh, which is close to the score of DRAM configuration. That is, if we replace quite some DRAM with PMAM, uh, the performance is almost the same. But if we increase the load higher and higher, the performance gap between the optimized configuration and the DRAM configuration uh, increases too. We think this uh, we think this uh, comes from the uh, first raw performance difference uh, of the underlying uh, media. For Mexico uh, ben uh, benchmark, uh, the benchmark score of all three configurations are almost the same. Analysis shows that the bottleneck of MySQL is disk random sync write latency. So uh, the memory performance isn't so important here. Uh, this also shows a uh, opportunity to use low performance memory for some workloads too. Uh, so we have now we have implemented the basic support uh, for the uh, system with multiple memory types, uh, but there are still quite some gaps in this area. Uh, here is a here is an incomplete list of to dos. Uh, we need to finish the memory tier your space interface uh, because it is kernel ABI. So more review. Uh, so I, I will ask for more review here. Uh, we have 
we have implemented the uh, framework of the uh, explicit memory tiers. Uh, and uh, in the next step, we will build memory types from various information, uh, like the, the driver information and the ACPI, HMAT, uh, SRIT, and so forth. Uh, now we can promote uh, anonymous and the mapped file cache pages, but the MAT file cache page, uh, file cache pages promotion is still lacking. Uh, we need to uh, try to find some way to control the page demotion promotion thrashing. And uh, during demotion, uh, we should avoid to reclaim too many reclaimable but unmovable pages such as inode DNT cache and so forth. Uh, yeah, now we only promote hot pages after they have been accessed. Uh, but uh, uh, we may try to find some way to promote ahead of accessing, uh, just like uh, read ahead for disks. Uh, and there, there may be uh, more quite some more opportunities to further improvement to improve the demotion and the promotion algorithm. Yeah, uh, that's all for my uh, presentation now. So uh, any questions, comments? Thanks, Ying. Any questions for lunch? Uh, hello, um, I have a question about the performance evaluation thing. If you can go back to the slide. Okay. Uh, yeah, I wanted to ask, for example, in Redis, what is the memory consumption uh, or size of the workload you are using? Uh, and whether it differs with the small sizes that don't trigger demotion and promotion uh, compared to like uh, bigger sizes, bigger memory sizes that trigger promotion and demotion? Uh, yeah. We, uh, as I said, in the system, we uh, the the ratio uh, between uh, DRAM and PMAM is about uh, one to four. Uh, okay, so yeah, and uh, and the uh, the eighty percent of the total memory size is used uh, as the 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 workload size. So so quite some okay, so PMAM will be, be used, yeah. So have you tried to run, for example, a workload that uh, has the uh, demotion and promotion enabled, but it doesn't trigger uh, any demotion and measure whether, whether this has an overhead or not? Uh, yeah, I, I, have, I, ha I haven't did her uh, yet. Yeah, I, I know your, uh, your, your concern. Yeah, the, the neural balancing uh, may uh, trigger the the hint page fault. Uh, yes. That 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 uh, and the the, the uh, page table scanning. Uh, that that will trigger quite some overhead for the. Yeah, uh, but this, this, this is, yeah, this yeah, is I, quite I, uh, workload dependent. Uh, I, I I think yeah. For some workload, uh, yeah, you can observe the 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 lengthy. Uh, Let's say data uh, caused by the the, the page, page table scanning or, or something like that. Yeah, but I, I, I have no data uh, now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I have done some analysis and evaluation on the patch set on that. Uh, and I have noticed that there is an overhead uh, if we uh -huh. don't uh, trigger uh, the motion, especially with uh -huh. the smaller size. But um, the performance is better when you have a high workload and a higher memory consumption that trigger the motion and promotion. So this yeah, is yeah, yeah. My, yeah. yeah. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I, I think so too. Thank you. Hi. I'd like to go back to the the question of that distance function. So the sure. how we define near versus far and the complexity of that. That feels to me an awful lot like a policy decision. It's mm -hmm. something that's going to get tweaked. Those offsets are going to get heavily used because people will want to optimize their particular database. Is it something where we can just not 
put that distance function in the kernel at all. So allow those just to be written in a similar fashion to you did for interleave weights. Make it something that's entirely user space with no defaults, so we can't get them wrong. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I uh, so at least we will provide a way for the user space to customize it. And uh, uh, if we do not provide any kernel fault value, how to how, how do we deal with that? Treat all memory equally? Then not uh, try to do something of reverse, of reverse, uh, of reverse, uh, reversely correct or something. You you know that uh, uh, the DRAM is uh, it, 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 the performance of DRAM is better than the Optin DCPMM. So so at least we can provide some default value to 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 uh, to make the uh, to let user know the DRAM is fast. Yes, so I mean, another way to look at this is to make it a problem for the distros. So the, the assumption is, yeah, you need to have some default values in there. The question is whether they are created by a distant function in the kernel or it's considered too complicated. And we push it out as a policy decision. Yeah, um, we, we think it, 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 it has policy side. And yeah, we, we, so, we, so we think we may need to uh, provide this some ways for for uh for users to customize it yeah it's not yeah. so much policy though as it is uh accurate metrics right it's an impossible metric because you've got the high dimensional space and you're trying to flatten it to one so oh yeah if you're yes the the well projecting down to a narrow dimension space yes yes yeah i mean the one one yeah. thing that we've kind of glossed over in the kernel for now is things like hmap provide the ability to give you not just latency and bandwidth, but to give you latency and bandwidth with a certain number of other characteristics. So you can have multiple values and it starts to get really horrible because it depends, are you under load? Are you not under load? Um, is it sequential? Yeah, yeah. All of this stuff. It's tricky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we found it hard to, uh, to deal with that too. So, so yeah, I want to ask for, Ed, does anyone have better idea than us? So, so yeah, we can work on something reasonable or something. Well, we're at time, so thank you, Ying.